Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to do something I've never done before and I'm going to do a winter themed DIY that's almost free. <laughs> There's just minimal cost here. I'm using paint I have on hand and I'm using this gorgeous scrapbook um, paper from photo player that I got at a local scrapbooking store and I absolutely love every single image on this paper and I am going to try to use all of them <laughs> so that's the part that is going to cost you a couple dollars or you can print off your favorite um, images online too so that would lower the cost so DIY number one I am going to repurpose this little box frame that I had used a couple years ago for Christmas and just going to give it a fresh new look. It's just one of those little box, I guess picture, it's not a picture frame, little box frames that you can get at Dollar General. It probably was an ornament and I had painted it black. So you might want to give this a base coat of black first. Then I came in with my navy blue because I'm trying to stay with in like the blues color scheme so we're going to use that sweater little square off of the photo paper and i had some of these snowflakes left over i think i got these at i might have got one pack at dollar tree and one pack at dollar general over the christmas holidays and i never used them so i thought that would be great to add for a winter theme now, all of these projects I'm doing would go great on a tear tray. Like, that's what I have in mind right now. My tear tray is still decorated candy canes because during the filming of this project, it was still December. And I didn't really want to pull it all off. And I don't have another tear tray to show you guys. But all of these projects would go perfect on a winter themed tear tray. So I added a jungle block to the center and I'm going to paint it white. Then I'm going to go over and kind of just lightly brush white all over, giving it white with a hint of that beautiful navy blue popping out. I'm also going to attach the snowflakes and then paint them white as well. And that's going to be the background to our little sweater. This is such a cute little sign and I love repurposing things I've already made. Um, once I've used them a couple times and I want something fresh and new, I just grab it unless I'm, you know, really, really in love with it. And I give it a whole fresh new look. I've never decorated like a winter theme. I think that would be so much fun because I'm always so bummed out when Christmas is over and I can't decorate <laughs> a theme. <laughs> So winter is perfect, even though I live down south, you know. Um, so I'm going to give the snow, uh, snowflakes, I'm going blank, a coat of that white paint as well. And then I'm just using hot glue and I cut the sweater out and I'm going to attach it in the center with hot glue. I cut out the sweater, as you can see. I got that glued down, but I also cut out where it said sweater weather and I I thought that would be really cute to put on top and I like if you wanted this to stick out a little bit you could grab another Jenga block or maybe a craft stick and attach it that way but I just glued it right to the top now even though I was trying to be careful I got white paint on my hands and I accidentally got it on the sweater so to fix that problem I went in my stash and I grabbed these beautiful iridescent little snowflakes that I've been using on projects and I kind of just rubbed them on top of my glue stick and I just started gluing them down and you know I'm all about little happy accidents I love this with the little iridescent snowflakes on it it really brings that sparkle to the sign and it kind of just ties it all together with the big snowflake behind it and yes yeah, super cute so I'm going to show you what this looks like but stay all the way to the end because at the end I'm going to show you all of the projects up close so here's a little sneak peek how cute that sign is DIY number two. Now, I said these are almost free DIYs, so it wouldn't be an almost free DIY without grabbing one of my cans. <laughs> I 
I have become the Sanford and son of my job. I have people from every floor bringing me their garbage because they know I love using trash and making it into decor. So I got people bringing me their old pill bottles, their little fabric softener bottles, old cans, like you name it. They're like, oh, can you use this for a project? I'm like, sure, you know. So it's kind of funny, but I appreciate them helping me out because sometimes I don't think myself and I throw stuff away that I shouldn't. So this one is going to be the hot cocoa and I just kind of trimmed it down and then I'm going to use my scissors and kind of, as you can see, I'm taking it and kind of squiggling around it. Now if you have those fancy scissors that do this for you, you don't need to do this. But I didn't want this just square, so I kind of made little rounded edges going all along. Then again, I used hot glue, and I glued this down to the front of that can that I painted dark blue with a hint of teal. The hot glue works really well with the scrapbook paper because scrapbook paper is thicker. I wasn't going to be able to get those can grooves in the paper with it being so thick so that's why I opted for hot glue and of course you need twine well you don't need twine but I just thought that this would make this kind of rustic country and I grabbed my twine went around the top and bottom with the twine and kind of just tied it all together um I just have to do it guys I have to I know I have some people there comment like, you don't need to distress things and everything don't need twine. I understand that. That's a personal choice and your projects, you can not use it, <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> so that's totally up to you if you want to put that on there, but see how cute that looks. So to take this up a notch, I grabbed some doll rods and I'm using, I didn't want to dirty another brush so I have this like paper antiquing um, stamp and I'm just rubbing it on the dowel rod it gives it a really nice brown color then I'm going to glue two of them together and I'm going to grab my twine and I'm going to tie it together after I glue it and it makes like makeshift cinnamon sticks so cute I know the real ones are even better, but I didn't have any on hand because then your house smells like cinnamon oh, and you can carry the holidays into January. So much fun. So if you don't have cinnamon sticks, do this. You can use burnt umber. You can use any kind of brown acrylic paint to paint on these sticks. Then glue them together or you don't even have to glue them together. Grab some twine and wrap it around the top and you got the cutest little cinnamon sticks. I've had these little spoons in my craft stash forever. I bought them from Dollar Tree. You get a gazillion in a bag for a dollar. So I just thought this would be cute to put some cinnamon sticks and some spoons and you know everything you would need besides the cup <laughs> to make some hot cocoa. There was a lot of silver and brown going on. So we needed a little white to mimic marshmallow color. So I did grab some white mesh and kind of folded it in a circle and put it behind the spoons and the cinnamon sticks. And I think that really makes everything in the can pop. The mesh is a great little filler, and like I said, because it's white, it kind of mimics marshmallow. Um, I just thought it needed something else. It was kind of too brown going on inside that can. <laughs> so again, I'm going to give you a sneak peek of how this project turned out. And if you want to see the rest, you got to wait till the end. But just kind of fluff it and put your spoons in there and the cinnamon sticks and you got an almost free little cute can for a tiered tray and here it is guys for almost free diy number three this one is using this Tarani, Tarani, 
Um, it's a sugar-free syrup for coffee. <clears throat> I guess you could use it for other things too, but I put it in my coffee. And I'm just going to leave the label on and paint this with some white chalk paint. Let that baby dry, and then I'm going to come back in with this really pretty teal acrylic paint. And I'm going to go over the whole bottle in the teal as well. Um, I only did one coat of the teal and I did one coat of the white. The teal kind of covers anything that the white missed and this is just so pretty. Like I said at the beginning, I'm using different blues. Um, I think blue and white just screams like warm winter for me. But you can do any color you want. So we're going to use the little snowman off that photo paper and I'm just going to put some Mod Podge on it and put this right in the center, kind of going over the existing label that was already on there. I knew I was going to be covering it with a big piece of paper so there really wasn't any need in struggling to get the label off. <laughs> I'll let it stay on. And then I come back in with some white paint and kind of go around all of the edges just dabbing to make it look like fallen snow on this bottle. Oh, it gives it like a frosty effect. So pretty. Oh my goodness. This bottle's one of my favorites just because I'm loving the teal and I love the white paint um, when I come back in. Right now you see me just taking a baby wipe and I'm going over it to get out the wrinkles and kind of making it a little bit smoother if I have any air bubbles so then taking some Mod Podge and going over it and then coming in with the paint. The paint serves two purposes it covers kind of the edges really makes it blend in with the bottle and it gives that fallen snow effect and so pretty frosty effect. So I came in with that wire mesh again and I'm going to just make a little lid or topper for this bottle by putting some in the bottle and then coming around and wrapping it around and then coming again around all of that with another piece of wire mesh and taking some white yarn to finish it off just to give this bottle a little kind of white snowy topper. DIY number four. This is the bottom planter of a succulent that I used in another project. And when I use the succulents, I usually just keep the planters for other projects. So I thought it would be cute to paint this white. And this is going to be the base for one of the Dollar Tree snow globes. Now, I did another project earlier on and probably end of November with these snow globes. I made a snowman. I had this one extra, so I thought it would be perfect to make a little winter scene snow globe for the tiered tray. And it fits perfect in the base of that succulent or planter. So this one I think says winter, I don't know what it says. It has a winter saying on it. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to use some silver trees that I didn't use for Christmas. And just make a snowy scene. Now the I wanted it to be um, real full inside the snow globe. So I took the trees and glued them to the base. And then kind of folded them over. You'll see, um, because I really wanted all of them, but the bigger ones were just too tall for the snow globe. And so I ended up just folding them over. It makes like these little bushes, which was so cute. Filled it with snow and put it together. So stinking cute. I um, don't have any, I have snow globes, you know, for Christmas, but I don't have a winter one. So I thought this would be cute addition to a tiered tray. 
once I had my trees all glued down that's when I started folding them over so that they would fit inside the globe once I had it the way I wanted it and it just took a little maneuvering you know I took that fake snow and put some hot glue down and added some snow to the base where I glued the trees and then I added just a little bit of snow inside the globe a little goes a long way you don't need a lot <laughs> I actually filled it too much the first time I had it empty some so you see the trees you see the snow and you see the little saying behind it which is so stinking cute then i just hot glued the snow globe to the planter and be careful if you if you have one of these planters like i do from a succulent it fits don't push because i did push the snow globe trying to push it like into the planter and kind of busted it but it was easily fixed with hot glue and it was fine, but just don't push too far in. I had some of this pretty silver ribbon and I thought that would finish this off by putting the ribbon um, on the, um, ba -ba 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 -ba, what are they called? Oh my goodness, the teeth of the snow globe, the bottom part that you don't wanna see. Um, <laughs> put some silver ribbon around there and super easy. I don't know about you guys, if you have grandkids or young children, they love snow globes. So this will be super fun for them to play with. It's plastic, so you don't have to worry about it breaking. Or if you are doing a winter theme tray, this is so cute on it. I wish I had an extra tiered tray. I was looking at the Target website, and um, I see a lot of crafters using that two-tiered tray with the metal around it really didn't realize how expensive that tiered tray is my target saying like $32 so yeah I think I'll just wait until uh, Christmas is over and decorate the one I got so DIY number five this is the easiest DIY now I have some of these white picture frames from Dollar Tree the real small ones and I had bought like probably five or six of them so I had a couple left over and all this is is cutting that scrapbook paper down to size and putting it in the white frame um I hope like you all's Dollar Trees have these they always have these at mine they have them in white and I think black and I'm trying to think if they have silver I'm not sure but they always have these little frames now the stand, um, my girlfriend gave me like 12 of these. So if you have one, great. If not, Walmart sells them for 97 cents. And then you can put the stand on the tear tray and put the picture frame right on the stand. It adds height and brings it up. If you have a tear tray like mine, where it's not flat tiers, this works perfect to bring it over the ridge so that it's seen because a lot of my stuff mine is so deep that I use Jenga blocks to like raise it or I have to put something underneath to bring certain items up so you can see them so these little easels there we go easels are perfect now that first one I had used for another project so it was painted white already so I thought it would be cool to paint this one in the navy to add that pop of more blue color you know since i'm trying to make this where they all kind of go together um and then i come in with my brush and some white paint and kind of dab some snow all on the um easel i keep forgetting what this thing is called and i love that brush from dollar tree i think i've said that before but that's like my favorite little distressing brush so here's a bonus bonus diy time Woohoo! this one's not blue this one is actually using pewter and elephant and some burnt umber. So this is a bonus DIY because that is the lid to the snow globe. And it was sitting on my desk and I don't like to waste anything. And I thought that it would be cute to paint the pewter and the elephant kind of make it look like... um galvanize yeah why can't Kelly think today so I thought it would be cute to just do one more project I had this little fabric softener bottle that you can get at Dollar Tree by the way that stuff smells amazing it's my favorite fabric softener and Dollar Tree sells these cute little dollar bottles and it's great for our camper and 
So I thought, okay, well, I'm going to put that on the bottle. Then I changed my mind. So right now you're going to get two bonus DIYs, two for the price of one. Because at first I was going to put the lid on the face of the bottle, and I didn't. Because I wanted to use two more pictures off that scrapbook paper. So the bottle is going to be using one picture and some doilies. And the little lid is going to use another picture and I'm actually going to attach it to a candle. So right now I'm just kind of, I did the pewter already. I'm coming back in with the elephant. Then I'm going to grab a couple doilies and glue those down um, to mimic snowflakes. At first, I was going to put the doily down and paint white through the doily to paint snowflakes on but it just it wasn't working the way I remember doing it when I was a child <laughs> so I decided to just glue the doilies right to the bottle and man you get a lot of doilies in a bag I was kind of pleasantly surprised with that um so here you see me trying to do it like I did when I was younger and yeah it just I didn't like it so then I come back in and I'm gonna just start dabbing white paint to lighten this bottle up and glue that doily right down to the bottle I did use two of these. I put one on the front and to make this bottle be one cohesive piece, I put one on the back too. And they kind of met at the sides, which was perfect. And I used Mod Podge for putting them down. Then I cut out the saying that I wanted and I used Mod Podge to put that on as well. Yeah, I've been really against Mod Podge lately. If you guys have watched my last few videos, yeah, it's not my friend. Me and Mod Podge are not getting along right now. So why I'm using it, I keep going back to it. I keep trying, guys. Um, I've been a real fan of glue sticks. Now, me and glue sticks are best friends. Me and Mod Podge are distant cousins right now. So, <laughs> but it did work. Then I came in with the my favorite brush and white paint did the same effect that I did on that other bottle and it's so pretty with the gray oh my gosh and this is kind of like an accent kind of breaks up all that blue that we have going on and with the other pieces and just yeah it, this is a really really pretty bottle and you guys are not going to believe how I finished it because I've been dying to do this and Actually, the day before Thanksgiving, I attempted it for the first time. But here you're going to see me do it. You've probably seen so many other DIYers doing this, but I'm going to give you a quick overview. So that was the cardboard from a toilet paper roll that I cut. And you just take yarn, and I grab my Dollar Tree yarn that's dark gray, and just start cutting pieces. Now you can use a template, like a piece of cardboard, and have them all the same size. Um, I was just doing a quick hat here, so I just kind of eyeballed it. You wrap, you put the pieces together, okay? Then you go behind it, and you pull it through the loop. You'll have a loop at the top, and you'll have two pieces at the bottom. You pull those pieces through the loop and just keep going until the toilet roll is totally covered. Um, like I said, the day before Thanksgiving, I finally attempted this project and made a garland out of these cute little hats. And I've seen so many people on YouTube do this. So I was excited to actually make me a garland. And then I was like, oh, I have extra yarn. I have extra toilet paper rolls. So let's make a little topper from a bottle. So once you have it all wrapped around that toilet paper roll, 
then you're gonna pull the yarn through so you're gonna it's hanging one direction when you are done and then you just push it through the toilet paper hole so it comes out the other end then you just take another piece of yarn tie it off at the top however big you want your hat right now it fits totally perfect on top of that bottle so right now I'm just putting it on the bottle and then seeing how tall I want my hat and then coming back in with another piece of yarn you're going to tie it off at the top and you can make your hat as tall or as short as you want it once you have it the way you want it tie it really tight couple of double knots and then trim the tassel at the top and you have the most adorable little winter hat ever i'm going to share with you guys the garland i made um for christmas and yeah i'm loving this i don't know who came up with this idea but they're a genius and how cute is that for a bottle top oh my gosh having that cute little hat on there so cute the bottle came out perfect and this diy was basically free because i had the craft supplies i used and the bottle i used too for laundry and there is the garland that i made and it has four little winter hats on it and then i use some beads and i have it hanging on the top of my ladder right now that i moved to the corner and i just love this garland i use green and red and natural wood beads and just strung it through the hats and yeah it turned out so cute and these are so easy to make So for the second part of that bonus DIY, I thought this looked like kind of like a bottle cap, like a large bottle cap. I thought it looked really cool. And after I was done painting it, I just cut out another part of that um, scrapbook paper. And I didn't even have to glue it because the has ridges, the little cap has ridges on the inside. And I kind of just used my fingernail and I pushed the photo paper into those ridges no glue, perfect. Then I grabbed one of my favorite little candles and I just hot glued this to the front of the candle. so cute and again if you have small children or cats like me um putting a battery operated votive is perfect because you don't have to worry about it burning the house down <laughs> and here is everything oh i will probably like do maybe i'll do a quick little video once christmas is done um, like I said, I am filming right now and it's still Christmas time. I'm still decorated for Christmas, but of how I did put these items on my tear tray. But here they are for now and they all are adorable, different, unique, almost free. Using household items or repurposed craft items and using leftover supplies that I had bought for Christmas and didn't use. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you inspiration. Let me know in the comments below if you guys are inspired to do your own little winter, warm winter wonderland tear tray. <laughs> or winter tear tray um i love you guys i am so grateful for you all i hope you had the most amazing holiday and i'll see you again soon guys have a blessed and wonderful week i love y'all bye y'all